Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to the KTH 910 AM interview of the week here on the Guadalupe Radio Network in North Texas. My name is Dave Palmer, and uh, I'm actually running the board today. Cecil is not here with me, and so I am doing double duty, and I'm delighted to introduce you to uh, a guest who I know you're familiar with, but been excited about this interview for quite some time. Uh, Patrick Coffin, founder and president of Patrick Coffin Media. He is at patrickcoffin.media, also patrickcoffin.net. And uh, he also, uh, for nearly eight years, in case you missed it, uh, hosted Catholic uh, Answers Live and just did a fabulous job on that, and also the Catholic Answers Focus podcast. And he also has written a book called Sex All Natural, What It Is and Why It's Good for Your Marriage, and the e-booklet called Stay Cool When the Argument Heats Up, Proven Strategies for Calm Conversing. And he is coming to North Texas as one of the speakers at the North Texas Catholic Men's Conference on February 23rd, and it's going to be at St. Patrick's Parish in Dallas, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., and we want every man in North Texas to be there. NTXCMC.org is the website. Patrick, uh, thanks so much for taking some time. Uh, good to talk to you. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Dave. Thanks for having me on. Great, great pleasure to be with you. All right. Uh, you know, my, my impression of what you're doing now, of course, you're coming to Dallas uh, with the Patrick Coffin Show, uh, having left Catholic Answers Live. I remember at the time thinking, oh, my gosh, what is this guy walking away from? Does he know what he's doing? But it seems right. like what you're doing now is thriving. You seem to be in your element. This, uh, How's it going for you? you, you a few controversial interviews. Uh, how would you define kind of your work right now and how much you're enjoying it? Oh, well, thanks, Dave. Thanks for asking. Yeah, I was crazy. I walked away uh, from a job I was happy with, steady paycheck, you know, solid yeah. ground. Uh, after seven and a half years, I felt like I had kind of reached a creative ceiling, and there were there were things I wanted to say and do, and people I, I wanted to connect with that weren't tied to explicit apologetics. Mm -hmm. And the way the Catholic Answers Live schedule was, it were you know the topics were chosen a month or two in advance, and I really wanted to dig into what was trending, and so uh, I had this idea to start my own podcast and kind of go upstream not departing from apologetics so much as uh, talking with influencers, uh, Catholic and not Catholic, who are rowing in the same direction as the Catholic Church is in this world that's getting more and more, not just politically correct, but chaotic. And a lot of people who have kids and grandkids are starting to look at their legacy. What are they leaving behind? Is the world that they inherited about the same, or is it worse, under their watch. And so um, I started this weekly podcast, The Patrick Coffin Show, and it's attached to a membership site, which we've affectionately called Coffin Nation. We've got uh, members in five countries, and the show itself is, uh, has regular downloads in over 110 countries. So we seem to have uh, hit a nerve. Mm -hmm. So uh, thanks for asking. Yeah, and you, you you were a little controversial of late because you interviewed Milo, and I'm probably going to butcher his last name if I try to say it, but everybody knows who I'm talking yeah. about. A lot of people yeah. thought, you know, openly homosexual man, of course, conservative, and, you know, there's probably a lot of things that we like about him. You defended that. Yeah. In fact, you have an article on your website where you defend that, and... Uh, how how do you how do you, where do you draw the line and say would anybody be okay or or how do you choose who's you know qualified so to speak to to to, to be interviewed sure. by you? Well, if my criteria, Dave, for guests was that I had to agree with everything they've ever said and done, I would not be able to interview myself. <laughs> so, uh, Milo Yiannopoulos uh, has been on my radar for a couple of years, and Milo is on a journey. He. I had a terrible uh, background being molested by a priest when he was 14 years old. That priest has since committed suicide. He has like abandonment issues. There's a lot in his story that, yeah. um, that kind of made me warm up to his, his journey and the, the way he articulated his Catholic faith. I first saw him on TV in England a couple of years ago uh, debating Boy George, and I thought he did very, very well. And yeah, Milo openly identifies as gay, but he understands that the born gay theology, or ideology, I should say, <laughs> although Freudian slip, there's some theology mm -hmm. that tilts that way as well, uh, was an invention of 70s and 80s feminism, that it, it, certainly in his case, it's more nurture than nature. Yeah. And uh, his new book is on, uh, in fact, the heart of it is called Make the Vatican Straight Again. He's very blunt in his critique of how um, people of a certain uh, agenda want to uh, kind of overtake and 
commandeer Catholic teaching. Milo believes all the teachings of the Church, yeah. and he admits that that he lives them out imperfectly. Yeah. And uh, I just want to I want to reach out to people who are rowing in the same basic direction. I've interviewed Jordan Peterson four times. Jordan, I'm not even sure if he's a theist. I presume that he is. Certainly not Catholic. Uh, there are people who are doing great work who are natural allies of the Church, even though they might be technically outsiders. Um, St. Augustine famously said, some outsiders are insiders, mm. and we need to link, be willing to link arms with people with whom we have common ground. Not, not to you know, demolish or, or deny differences, but uh, let's have a conversation about the things that we have in common and the strength that we can gain if we work together. Yeah, and I actually heard, I think it was on, oh, it certainly does. I think I heard in Catholic Answers Live the other day on Aquinas' feast day that he was very controversial in his time for, you know, uh, quoting Jews and Muslims and uh, and also, mm-hmm. of course, Aristotle being a pagan plays in very heavily in the the Summa, and that that yeah. wasn't that didn't go over too well in all circles back in the th- 13th century. Um, Patrick, right. let me let me ask you this: uh, You come to the men's conference. The idea is to strengthen men. Uh, we're all in different stages of our life, but we're all living in the same culture. And mm-hmm. it's almost, you know, I think if you if you and I had talked 10 years ago, we would have said, you know, this is such a unique age to be a Catholic. And if we had talked 15 years ago, we would have said, wow, what a unique age to be a Catholic. So it's almost, yeah. it almost doesn't really mean anything, but this is <laughs> a unique time to be a Catholic. And I know that it sounds cliche, but how, how would you define this age, 2019? This is really an, a p- particularly interesting time, isn't it? Well, interesting is one of the most interesting ways you can put it there. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, I think we, we naturally tend to over-romanticize the good old days. Yeah. And we also tend to forget the crises that our forefathers and mothers had to deal with. I think what makes 2019 unique is the weaponized ambiguity from, uh, from uh, so many people in Catholic leadership that we, we would normally associate with solidity and common ground, like the, the reputation and brand of the Catholic Church has been this infallible, coherent, um, you know, continuous uh, body of teaching. But uh, in the last six or seven years, Pope Francis, with his off-the-cuff, kind of shoot-from-the-hip uh, way of communicating, uh, a lot of faithful Catholics are scratching their heads about what he may have meant if, if you take him in context and, and in relation, relation to the, everything else the Church is has been teaching. So no longer can we say all Catholic Church totally clear, all outside the Church totally unclear. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, I, I take it as a call to keep my head down, focus more in, uh, more in, um, intentionally on my relationship with Christ. You mentioned Aquinas earlier. There are other people besides Aquinas who are also controversial because they believe with all their heart, mind, and soul that Jesus Christ is the truth. And wherever truth is found, there is Christ. So as, as Catholics, we have to uh, be open to the truth wherever it is, even from surprising circles, yes. um, inside and outside the Church. That would be my compressed answer. Yeah, one of the things, you know, at the time that we're doing this interview, there's the big controversy of Andrew Cuomo um, up in New York and that horrible abortion yes. bill. Even, you know, Cardinal Dolan uh, called it, you know, horrible, and or some, some word to those that, uh, th- yeah. th- that, 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 that. But, but still, no excommunication. A lot of people are saying, you know, we have spineless leaders, you know, the, the bishops aren't doing anything. We need uh, people to stand up and be more like St. Ambrose, you know, and more excommunications. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you in that camp, uh, you know, as we're talking about a men's conference, and I, I think there is, and I certainly feel it myself, a tendency to just kind of get along and see how many likes I can get on my picture on Facebook and, you know, mm-hmm. just kind of put stuff, you know, bland, you know, pleasant, benign stuff. Is there yeah. is there a need for more boldness, you know, both in the hierarchy and the lay laymen as well? Do you, do you think that's that's that there weren't a crisis of boldness and courage? Um, yeah, and then some, sure. I also think that boldness is is contagious. Um, when I witness uh, fellow Catholics and non Catholics prophetically speaking truth to power and not looking over their shoulders to see, oh, am I getting am I losing Twitter followers here? Maybe someone might say a bad thing about me. Um, I am. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a bishop of the church. I'm in sales, not um, you know management. Uh, I don't really know. At not being a canon lawyer, I'm not sure what the the criteria are for excommunication. But in the case of signing onto and gruesomely 
uh, fist, you know, fist pumping for something that kills a baby up to the moment of birth. It seems to qualify for excommunication. <laughs> and remember, excommunication is medicinal. It's for it's an act of charity yeah. to the Catholic who doesn't perhaps doesn't know where the line is. Um, I would love to see it, but I think. I, I think the problems in the church are so much deeper. We're talking about a lack of evangelization, 50 years of, of low information catechesis. So I think the fact that uh, a self-professed Catholic can stray so far from the bosom of the church and go unpunished says a lot about where we are. Yeah. Uh, bringing up one more current event. Uh, well, of course, current today is about you know 24 hours before it's off the pages of the news, but relatively right. current is the Covington um, b- Catholic Boys in D.C. And, yes. uh, you know, th- that was disturbing on many fronts, but I think what perhaps most disturbing is this is a guy that kind of held his ground, so to speak. He didn't just say, oh, mm-hmm. you know, you can come bang and draw him in front of my face. I'm just going to, you know, walk away. I-, I thought they they showed a lot of courage, but the, the yep. lesson, I think, that goes out because the media onslaught is... You know, the, the, these guys, well, this was toxic masculinity <laughs> at its worst. And I just don't know how wimpy the culture wants boys to be. I mean, these guys really didn't do much. You know, maybe they, a lot of people said they didn't, they, you know, they would have punched that guy or they would have, you know, yelled something. Yeah. Are, are, is, are, are we being, and then, of course, you have the Gillette commercial, you know, about toxic masculinity. Is there a concerted yeah. effort, in your opinion, to make men wimpy and less masculine in our culture? You took all my arrows from my quiver. <laughs> yes, 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 and yes. I did a uh, commentary on the Covington teens that YouTube and their wisdom have decided to demonetize. So I'm in a battle with YouTube now to get some of my uh, commentaries uh, back where they should be and not quarantined or shamed. Yeah. Um, I think the, the, the teen boys in Covington were guilty of at least two things. One, their hat apparel was the wrong political party. Mm-hmm. If it was a Hopi changey President Obama hat, we wouldn't be talking about it because there'd be no story. Yeah. Number two, they were guilty of great courage and patience in a strange and maybe a potentially dangerous situation, Dave. I watched the hour and some minute long video from the black Hebrew perspective, or also yeah. known as black Israelites. These teen boys, just waiting for their bus to go back to Kentucky, uh, were called all manner of homophobic, racist, uh, slander, libel, just just vitriol. That didn't make it into the 12-second Twitter clip. And yeah. I was very embarrassed for conservatives and some Catholic leaders to, to pile on and shame these kids and, and ask them to apologize. And some of the, uh, some of the people who piled on did, did walk it back. But the church and the world, I mean, we're not moving at the speed of Twitter. We have to kind of take a deep breath and realize the first wave of information in the media is almost always dead wrong. In this case, it certainly was. I was proud of the way they comported themselves. If I had a teenage son, uh, I would have given him mega attaboys. And yeah. it's it's just sad when people pile on, uh, you know, getting ahead of the facts. Yeah. So we have the environment that we're in now. The the media, of course, is trying to uh, make 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 boys and men less masculine. Gillette, you know, all this going on, the sex scandal, the confusion with Pope Francis. And one thing you may or may not realize is that when you come uh, on the 23rd, we'll be about three mm-hmm. weeks from the Dallas and Fort Worth diocese and all the diocese in Texas releasing the names of all priests and religious credibly accused of sexual misconduct, and that is expected to hit North Texas and all of Texas Mm -hmm. uh, pretty powerfully. So, you know, you're going to come into a a wounded uh, state, uh, you know, men wounded personally, not not even to mention their their personal lives and divorce or losing Mm -hmm. jobs. You know, we're, 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 we're down right now. And so you come into this situation, how... What is your strategy? What not to give your whole talk away, but you know the the theme sure. of the theme of the event is uh, is um, strengthen your brothers, stand firm in Christ. Luke twenty two thirty two. Uh, what would you like to talk mm-hmm. about? Uh, well, the I think the title they're going to run with is the secret key to manhood in Christ: being holy in a hashtag world. And I won't I won't drop the entire secret uh, here, Dave. I have yeah. to be, have to be a little bit <laughs> cryptic. Um, the grand jury report in PA and the ones that are going to rule and all the names that are released in North Texas are going to be an occasion of temptation for Catholics to succumb to moral panic. 
I tried to begin reading the, the uh, grand jury report from PA, and I had to stop on, on the second page. And I realized that no one has defined credibly accused, first of all. What does that mean? No one wants to talk about what the yeah. definition of that is. What's the, what's the trigger point of credible versus not credible? Secondly, just to focus on PA, because it, it was uh, the higher profile of the investigation so far, of 300 accusations, excuse me, 301 accusations, only two indictments were secured, mm. which means put the other way, 299 accusations did not have enough evidence to go forward um, compared to two that did. That's a very low number of actual indictments. And we'll never know. Half the priests who were accused are deceased. Their names will never be able to recover. Their reputations uh, have been destroyed. So I think we have to take a deep breath and not, as, as in the case of the Covington teen story, don't succumb to moral panic. It's very easy to you know, sharpen your pitchfork and light up your lantern and, and yell for, quote, something to be changed. The Catholic Church is one of the safest places for children and minors. If you mm-hmm. compare that with soccer coaches, Boy Scout leaders, public school teachers, the, the statistical evidence is overwhelming, especially now that the, the Catholic Me Too um, movement has become so much in the public eye. However, bad things happened, and crimes were committed, as, as well as sins, and we can't whitewash it. I mean, one example of uh, any kind of abuse is one too many. I think we can all agree with that. Yes. Still, Jesus Christ founded the Catholic Church, and why do you think Dave, I know you've probably pondered this. Why, given the similar behavior among Jewish and Muslim and Protestant and other secular groups, why is the Catholic Church always above the fold for months and months? Why is there specific intentional attention given by the media to Catholic sins and crimes? I think it has something to do with the fact that the Church makes a unique claim to be directly founded upon Christ and the Apostles. Mm -hmm. The devil does not want people entering the Church. The devil wants men especially to be weakened, to be cowering, to be uh, concerned about what people think of them, and we have to move forward and not backward in proclaiming the Gospel by the decisions we make, by the patience we have, by the peace that we exude, even if some of our leaders have been bad. I remember uh, St. Mother Teresa back in the 80s was asked in a press conference uh, by a reporter about um, the, uh, it was a, a scandal that happened in Canada in a place called Mount Cashel in Newfoundland. And after a moment, Mother looked up and she said, well, our Lord's own choice of the 12 apostles was not very impressive, was mm. it? They all abandoned him. One betrayed him to his death, and, and the one he called the rock uh, denied him three times. The church has been wonderfully blessed through the Holy Spirit with strong, good, loving, reliable men of God to a, a very impressive degree, in, uh, considered as the church after the, um, after the resurrection. So I think we have to keep our eyes on Christ and realize we're not going to fix this one-on-one for the same reason that our Lord never sent men out to, uh, as apostles, you know, one by one. Mm-hmm. We're not lone rangers. We need each other. Iron sharpens iron. Nerf does not sharpen nerf, but iron sharpens iron, <laughs> which is why I love I love being with men. I love talking about uh, fatherhood and the power of sonship and our need to uh, to be forged with each other. We have to tell each other the truth, and we have to stop using all these euphemisms. And that's I think this is one of the main reasons why that Gillette commercial backfired so badly. I mean, how many men who use Gillette products uh, are never going to shop there again? Yeah, because the message is, hey. I was so tempted to bully today, or I really wanted to catcall a woman or, you know, do some terrible yeah. thing, but my shaving cream said, don't be a nice guy. <laughs> Barf, please. I can't uh, take it. Uh, Patrick Coffin joining us. Just have about a minute remaining. Uh, he is founder, president, Catholic Co- pa- Patrick Coffin Media, and he's going to be one of the speakers at the men's conference coming up very soon. In fact, this month, uh, it's going to be at St. Patrick's Catholic Church in Dallas, and uh, the other speakers, Bishop Edward Burns of the Diocese of Dallas, and also Father Mitch Pacwa uh, from mm-hmm. EW10 is going to be there as well. February 23rd, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., and there's a Mass that begins at 8 o'clock that uh, everybody's encouraged to uh, uh, participate in as well. NTXCMC.org, NTXCMC.org. And Patrick, I just want last question, because uh, we are about out yeah. of time. You know, so speak to the person out 
out there. I mean, there, there are guys like me. I've never missed one of these men's conferences. I'm in. You know, I'm emceeing, so of course I'm in. But, yeah. you know, and, <laughs> You're all in. and they, they would go, you know, regardless of the speaker and what's going on. But then there's some people that are like, yeah, I don't know. They're the, speak to the guy on the fence, the, the wife of the guy on the fence who can urge her husband or brother or father to go. Uh, why is this important for them to come on the 23rd? Well, let's presume that the, the guy on the fence is not listening right now. The people who are off the fence and who, like you and me, are all in, Dave, they need to shoulder tap the ones who are on the fence. So I'm, I, I think it's uh, effective to, to address people who are listening who are going to come to ask their fathers, their sons, their nephews, their cousins, their grandfathers, maybe someone who's been away from the church for a long, long time. This is not like going to a, a churchy, super pious event. It's a Saturday. It's a chance to let your hair down, if you have hair. And like you, Dave, your, your Tuesday <laughs> looks so I, real. Um, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think we men are looking for a message of purpose and hope and encouragement. That's what this conference is about. This is why I'm happy to be there. Uh, I know there's a lot of, uh, of apathy among some men. We, a lot of husbands and fathers make the mistake of leaving faith formation to their wives. That's a terrible mistake. And it's only until you're in a room with men who are like-minded, who are focused on one thing, and that's discovering why they exist. A lot of men don't know why they exist. Mm -hmm. They think maybe they're just supposed to be providers. They're just supposed to be the guy who writes the check to father every, every week or what have you. But God is calling us to a great adventure, and the adventure is tough. It's not for wimps. Um, so if you are listening right now, bring someone who's been away from the church. Not that we don't need choir rehearsal. We do. I'm a choir member. I need preaching too mm -hmm. constantly. Um, as much as I, I, you know, we can be filled with the Holy Spirit, we also leak. So events like this, outside uh, are the regular, it's not like Sunday Mass. It's a chance to unwind, listen to the local shepherd, Bishop Burns, uh, my friend Father Mitch Pacwa, who I affectionately call a Jesuit and practicing Catholic. And... <laughs> We are going to, I hope he's not listening. Uh, we are going to have a great time. There'll be lots of laughs. There might be a couple of tears. Above all, it'll be a life-changing conversation and an encounter with Christ and with uh, with brothers. All so right. I'm lo really looking forward to it. All right, very good. Patrick, thank you so much. Again, I just want to give you the details. Patrick is speaking, Bishop Edward Burns, Father Mitch Pacwa, St. Patrick's Catholic Church in Dallas, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturday, February 23rd. If you're a man 18 or over, uh, as Patrick said, and come and encourage others to come. Now, don't, don't, uh, don't, and everybody can come. They don't even have to be Catholic. Uh, every man needs to be there. We should have that entire mm -hmm. church absolutely filled with some men having to stand because the, they, they can't fit them all into the into the sanctuary. Uh, yeah. NTXCMC.org is the website. NTXCMC.org is where you get your tickets. The earlier you buy the tickets, the cheaper they are. Uh, they have this uh, system where they, they keep getting more expensive the longer you wait, and I think that's great. Hey, Patrick, great talking <laughs> to you. I look forward to seeing you on the 23rd, and uh, thanks for all spending right, some Dave. time with me today. I appreciate it. If folks want to find out what, what else I'm doing, it's patrickhoffman.media. Super easy to remember. Look All forward right. to seeing you, sir. Thank you very much, Patrick.